All right, so we're going to start our match review segment for this evening. We have a couple in, so we'll, we'll be going through those. Uh, we have a pinhead match review coming to us from Black Orb, who has 1k hours in the game, which is usually that zone where I expect you to be knowing most your most basic fundamentals in the game. Uh, there may be some stuff that fell through the cracks, but for the most part, you know general things like, you know, where to find survivors, how to loop without losing a lot of distance, just the basics. Um, you're on Batum, uh, which is one of the most survivor side of maps in the game, which sucks for you. And luckily, it's not the first two Batums, which are kind of considered the strongest. Um, but Batum is never a good time. Any map that has, like, three main buildings is never going to be a good time. <laughs> three main buildings and a shack. Um, and it is a fairly strong character, though, like high B, low A. So, uh, and uh, one of my close friends, Field Angel Reaper, is one of the most no well-known pinheads. Uh in the DVD community, so I, while I am not particularly amazingly good at Pinhead, I used to play them uh, in my normal rotation uh, before Xenomorph came out, uh, I do know one of the best Pinheads. I am well informed. I love Batum, I don't like Batum. We got Batum too, like three times today. And that's the one with the crap ton of pallets. Blech. Terrible. Anyways, let's take a look at your add-ons and your poiks. Hey, Reaper's here for it! Reaper's here for it! That'll be great. You're gonna get, you're gonna get from the from the mouth of like one of the best pinhead players in the community. There you go. Okay, bad ham, bad ham, bad ham. Just let, just call Reaper really quick. <laughs> Have him guest star. Okay, all right, Reaper. Mm. Okay, Reaper, Reaper. <clears throat> what do we think of these add-ons, huh? What do we think of the add-ons in the build? What do we think of the add-ons in the build? What are we thinking? <laughs> okay, what are we thinking? <laughs> oh, get me and call legitimately. Legitimately, because like, if I could, like, that would probably be. Uh, it says you're playing Fortnite. Yeah, let's do it. Oh my gosh, that's so hilarious. Hold on. Oh. Hello. Hello. Okay, so what are we thinking about the add ons? Okay, um, so Impaling Wire is already probably a top tier choice. I mean, I, I'll just say the best choice. It's his best add on by far. And Larry's Remains is also really, really good. Um, typically, I like to pair it with range, but you don't really need... Well, I mean, some situations you do, but it, it, that's kind of just like a nitpick with me. Um, but honestly, I know Bronx uses that combo, uh, this exact same combo too. So honestly, I'd, I'd, I'd give it like a 9 out of 10. And why is it good? Um, well, because Impaling Wire simply just makes it so that if you're not having like perfectly placed chains or maybe even if you are and there's just weird debris it kind of helps uh alleviate some of the rng that sometimes comes with playing with pinhead um even though you can as a player do a very good job of alleviating it it's there's always going to be situations where there's quite literally nothing you're going to be able to do it's just chains are going to break because of where they spawn and how survivors moving uh you know tons of different factors and um, but that just helps a ton with that. And Larry's remains just gives you two extra seconds to make any sort of play involving the box. Even if you're not stopping someone solving the box, sometimes, oh, I'm, you know, just pick someone up and that extra two seconds is just enough time to be able to finish the hook and then get a TP off, which is honestly huge. Being able to do that, being able to just instantly get into chase after hooking someone is always huge. Like there, there are just so many situations where that two extra seconds just makes a huge difference and at the end of the day that's also just two more seconds that somebody has to spend solving the box so like it's just a really good add-on so these are both really really good add-ons and what are we thinking about the build barbecue save surge pain res i love barbecue that is a perfect choice that is one of the best perks on pinhead just because of the fact that you can use that information to kind of track the box a little bit um it's also just good generic information anyways but it's even better on Pinhead because if you're able to kind of see where people are, you can make good or better guesses on where the box is going to be. Um, or if you have a chain hunt active after stealing the box from someone and then hooking that player that you just took it from, you'll be able to see who's going for the box and then just basically walk straight over to them without having to do any of the guesswork. Um, Surge is really good on Pinhead because it's going to trigger no matter what as long as a gen is close to you because all of his attacks are M1 based. Pain Res is the best slowdown in the game right now, so obviously that's really good. And those two pair really well together because they don't interrupt each other. Like you're going to be able to hook people and down people and neither perk will interrupt each other. Like something like, let's say like uh, Pain Pain Res, yeah. Surge or something like that. Um, and save the best for last. You honestly, you can't go wrong with it on Pinhead. 
Um, honestly, yeah, I'd say this is overall a really, really solid build. Like, there's really no... I, I wouldn't say there's any true weaknesses with this build. Um, but I'm curious to see how our friend plays uh, plays Pinhead here on Bad Hand. This is a really tough map. This is still one of the hardest maps that I even and I still struggle on. Uh, just because of all of the buildings, it's kind of hard to play around some of the buildings sometimes where... Uh, it, especially with the fact that there's always going to be 18 pallets that spawn on this map. It's it's a tough map. It's a really tough map, so... I'm really curious to see how this gets played out. Okay, now remind me, before we get started, it's 40 meters around you and 16 around the survivors? That, can't that spawn? is correct, yes. Uh, uh, in in the normal circumstances, yes. In yeah, normal circumstances. because if they start you know, overlapping too much, it can just kind of do its exactly. own thing. Like, for example, uh, it, it was either yesterday or the day before on... This typically only happens on really small maps like RPD, um, but I actually spawned in and the box was 10 feet to the left of me. So yes. you know the balcony? You know you know the balcony uh, upstairs where the, the library is on yeah. RPD? Yeah. So I spawned in that doorway and the box spawned by that staircase, that like little, the one that uh, where you can also kind of like meet up with that little drop down hole that's in the library, like that staircase right there. It was on that platform where that window, that vault is. It was right mm -hmm. there. So I spawned in the, the, the doorway and 10 feet <laughs> to the left of me was the box, so. <laughs> It was just kind of funny. So like, it, but yeah, and on a map this size, you're 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 almost never gonna have like this. If if something like that happens, that's like really 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 rare. So just um, four perfectly split up people, and then you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but the odds of that are incredibly low. So and they are on a uh, controller as well, so it might be harder to oh, change. Oh, okay, them. yeah, that's that's already yeah that. Uh, Playing Remember, on controller is difficult. That door is okay to break. Never ever break the door on the other side because that creates an infinite. Do that not. That is true. That door can make sense. That way you can, you know, especially if that gen spawns on the corner there. It's nice to access it from the main building, but never ever break the other door. Yeah, I only ever break that other door if um, if I just need to be getting down, going down to that gen for whatever reason, like very quickly, like maybe I'm near the end of the game. So seeing that a survivor spawned here, typically the box would have spawned right where uh, our pinhead is in this area. But because there was a survivor here, that just instantly tells you that there is going to be no box there because Typically what I do is I, I go to where I think the box is going to be and if I see a survivor I make a distinction where oh okay there's a survivor here I'm going to leave and I'm going to um, go find the box because I know it's not here. Um, but committing to this isn't honestly a bad idea and also getting Shaq at 5 gens yeah that's yep. honestly not terrible at all. Uh, I would have stayed on the injured person here I would not have split off. Especially when yeah, all of your perks are, all your slowdown perks are based on downing people. That is true. Yeah. I mean, but not terrible. It all depends. But the thing is, I mean, in this situation, though, uh, if our pinhead had sloppy, then that wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. Because applying pressure with sloppy on pinhead, honestly, is really, really strong. Um, but because there's no sloppy and I mean, I will say, though, the one thing that honestly makes this not the worst thing ever is this is still not our obsession. So you're still farming good stacks, sometimes farming a bunch of stacks really early in the uh, beginning of the game can actually be quite effective, uh, especially on Pinhead. So not the, it's not the worst situation, um, but it kind of just depends on what this Nia does in this next chase. Like, it looks like they, they should be able to get a hit here. Hopefully. Yep. Oh, yeah. So right there, when I, let's say I was in that situation and I would have missed as well. Mm. Um, and I saw Nia instantly going around the left of the car to continue looping this. I instantly would have turned around and placed a gateway behind the, uh, the car and then shot it into her from there, and then she she dies. She gets hit. Well, she doesn't die, but she gets hit. 
hundred percent right there. Mm -hmm. So if, if in that situation I see that, Oh, she's going to keep looping. Oh, okay. Well I'm instantly uh, placing a gateway behind the car. Cause obviously she wants to try to make it around as quickly as she can. And then I'm going to bind her right there. Like right there. If I, if I'm not, because like, yeah, that first hit, yeah, you probably, if you hadn't, uh, if you had gotten that hit, then obviously, yeah, there's no need to use your power there, but uh, missing that right there, I instantly would have uh, set myself up for a, uh, a hit especially since this loop is very open. There isn't a lot of junk around the uh, street side of the car. So that's what I would have done. I see a lot of pinheads just kind of like, kind of get afraid to use this power and just end up like, you know, walking at people. Because like now yeah. you're in this situation where you, you didn't get the down for surge pain res and you didn't even get an injury off of Nia. So you're kind of like, you've, you've sunk a lot of time at the beginning of this match into essentially nothing but one injury. Mm-hmm. So you're a little yeah, behind on your early pressure. Yeah, so that definitely wastes some time. Okay, mm. and I wish I could give better advice, but it's really been years since I've played a uh, consistent controller because ever since I quit uh, playing DVD on Xbox and switched to PC, I just have not touched controller at all. So uh, I wish I could give more advice about playing Pinhead or just Killer in general and controller, but th that's kind of something that's just degraded from me at this point so you um, are going through this this two-story house and you hear somebody working on the gen right above you and it's very close and you don't stop them uh at this point nia has shown that at least for you in particular like she kind of has your number a bit she's you know avoiding you but that person upstairs you already have the the breakable wall broken here this two-story is not as good of a, of a tile with that door with that door gone so you're probably going to be able to push her off the gen prevent the gen from popping surge it and then pain res it if you had gone upstairs and found that person mm -hmm. but you choose to continue to chase near here and there's something else you can do here in this situation because obviously you are focused on this player but because you're not going to get an immediate hit something nice about pinhead that you can do is you can very quickly just throw a gateway upstairs and actually just confirm where this person is upstairs and then see if there is if they're still there if they're getting ready to move and then make a play based off that you could have very quickly just like looked up right now and just placed the gateway up there and checked just to see what's going on up there especially if you heard a gen being worked on so yeah, you're not clown. You can use those things for info as well, not just, you know, cutting off chase. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, right there. So what I would have done was you were you. Uh, I see why you canceled, but what you should have done right here was you should have put it on the inside of the fence. Because at that point, she has pretty much no options because there's two things that happen. Um, will most likely happen because the there is a there is a counter that this Nia could have done if you are doing what I'm saying, but most people aren't going to do that. Is what happens is you place it on the inside. If she runs into the chain link fence, you hit her. Um, if she keeps running along the fence line, you just shoot it, you know, out. Go like you're in the inside of the fence, and then you just launch the chain out, and then you hit her. And in both situations, she's bound. And since you have impaling wire, you, you really shouldn't be afraid to just be hitting people with chains because even if they're snapping their chains, those extra bonus chains are going to come in and they're going to usually make a pretty big difference. So right there, you shouldn't have canceled. You should have just moved the gate to the left and then uh, and then hit her from there. That's what I would have done. Okay. Good hit. Perfect. Yeah, that was a perfect hit. Yeah, perfect hit. Okay, and then of course you have a pain res, and then you just don't walk through the pallet just in case there's someone with, you know, background player or something being a goober. Okay, so you know everybody is on the left side of the map because you walked under the two story house, heard them working on that gen. You also heard progress on the gen in the corner on that same side of the map, but you're walking. The opposite direction for some reason and this is well, something they... this is something that i this is something that i've told i told you in your oni review that you sent me was that your macro game needed some work that was one of your takeaways was that you kept just like popping very like 
low progress gens and kind of like not knowing where to go and not keeping track of which gens are being worked on where and it seems to be that you didn't work on that at least not into a significant amount since the last time we talked this is still something you need to work on it looks like mm -hmm. i mean there is a very good possibility i don't know where a, the fourth survivor is but there is a possibility that the box is actually up here in the corner by this building or in the cor top corner by the school somewhere on this like side of the map and you're the pinhead mate and because unless they grab it right now chain out's about to happen anyway is losing mm -hmm. that whole gen and then the other gen that was half worth that? Worth the finding of the box potentially? It, it I, I'll say it can be um, if you are going to start trying to chain uh, chain hunts together. Um, but considering that um, maybe our pinhead player isn't very knowledgeable with that kind of information, probably not. Probably not, because the chain hunt is a very powerful tool, but if you're not using it correctly, it's not going to do very much. So yeah, I was right. I was gonna, It was either going to be up here or in the top corner by the school. So uh, it was kind of a 50-50 where it was going to be. Why did you walk up and then teleport? <laughs> mm, maybe they thought they, they, they could try to get it, but then realized maybe they were running out of time to be able to try and make some sort of a play. Um, now, I would have at least tried to see if I could have gotten a gateway in there, because you do mm. have that extra two seconds. And it looks like they're in the school, so you you most likely actually could have um, gotten that potentially. Mm. I, I think it's I think there might have been at least another two or three seconds before that popped. So you might have had time. But, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, if you really feel like you're not going to get it, sometimes it's OK, especially since uh, they're not in chase. Just getting a teleport and teleporting just, you know, a few Opened feet it. even can be beneficial. I came. Yeah. The, yeah. You can play a skate the race through. Also, essentially, it's essentially like a little mini nurse, if you think of it that way, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but they yeah, can you go can through walls. Through. They actually have basically the same exact properties of a nurse blink. So. If you understand how nurse blinking works at all, then yeah, that uh, that can actually make a big difference. Yeah, this is Reaper, one of the best uh, pen and maids in the community. So, very, very good. Very, very good for a match review. This, okay, no, this was the same person again. So yeah, now you see with barbecue that there's someone on this gen. Box should be coming back really soon. Yep, mm. here it is. So the box is going to... So one thing I would have done too is I I would have looked behind me too with barbecue just to see if you could see where one or the other people are going to be. So you because can start even, figuring out where the box will go. Yeah, exactly. Because like even if you can't figure out exactly where it's going to be, Sometimes just having that information of, oh, it's either going to be here or here can be really helpful because, like, let's say, like, Don't they just that. saved over by the school and then 30 seconds goes by and the box still isn't picked up. Oh, it's it's not going to be by that side then, you know, like it's going to be because they would have picked it up. You know, they, there's no way they would have just, you know, ran away from the box and left it because, you know, people typically aren't going to do that. They're going to want to pick it up and solve it. So, um, oh, that was close. Yeah, you were too close to the wall. If she had crouched under you, <laughs> aimed it up maybe, but... Yeah, yeah that was an interesting play. Okay, but at least there was another pain res that went down. Mm -hmm. And there's no shack pallet in this pallet here, so this this should be pretty much a free down. Okay, um, that, that was, was perfect. I would have done the same thing right there, yeah. So you kind of want to treat uh, shack or flat walls just like demo where you angle the gateway out and then shoot it in so even if they they juke even if they juke then they can't really like if they juke to the left you just pull the chain out if they commit the way they are then you just keep it in a straight line so and it looks like it might have gotten stuck potentially on something yeah that would have been i i liked the attempt because then she would have been chained while they were kicking it to buy time Mm -hmm. But it didn't work out that way. But I will say though, like I can playing Pinhead on controller 
like I use my my wrist quite a bit when it comes to playing pinhead, so I, I just couldn't do that with my thumbs. So like I, I'm totally, you know, understanding of why maybe hit, trying to go for some of these these chain plays might be actually really difficult, um, especially right here in the school. In this situation, is pinhead. You know, I'm not going to commit to this guy super long, but in, I will try to force out. Oh, looks like he syringed. Uh, yeah, he syringed. That's right. No, oh, wait, no this is a different survivor. Yeah, this is, this is a different survivor. They're both wearing the same outfit, so that's why this is the death one, which is why he's committing so hard. Yeah, so I mean, he did uh, force out the pallets downstairs, which honestly, when I'm playing on this map as any killer, um, I don't want to commit to the school very long, but if I know yeah. I can just get those pallets out of the way, like, really, really fast, then I know if someone else won't be able to come over and, like, abuse that. So, right here, I would have set up a chain, too, because mm. obviously, you know, like, you, you could mind game this pretty easily, but if the survivor gets a little lucky like they did here, um, if you just place a gateway there and chain them, they're not going to be able to like mind game you. They're just going to be stuck in that room and that room's pretty open. So they're just going to be dead right there. I would have used my power there 100% because then there's nothing they're going to be able to do. They're not going to be able to just like run away or, you know, get out here. Even though you're getting the hit, looks like you're going to down him. You could have had him down like, like six, seven seconds earlier. And you know, especially in a game like this where it's it's coming down to the wire, like that that can make a difference. So thing, and it's like it's one of these things that I harp on in a lot of match reviews. If there's a lot of like micro inefficiencies, like there's a lot of like just Wing at the survivors and not putting the chains out. And I know like on console it's harder, but like you know, I, somebody did this. There, I had the same advice for somebody who was playing Singularity on console. It was like they weren't you know going for the for the gumballs and gooping the survivors so they could teleport to them and it's like don't like don't play the character and then go well i'm not a mouse or keyboard and then just never use their power right like yeah you still should be going for the power and not just like wing because like you said like they're like four or five seconds doesn't make doesn't sound like a big deal but when every chase you're having is getting extended by four or five seconds like that adds up that's a that's a partial yeah. gen finished so if you that were really is especially gateways, right now matter. like and another reason to just like kind of add on that and say why like that's important is getting someone down faster right now because if you take a look at the chain hunt it is 50 percent charged there is most likely going to be one survivor who goes okay i'm gonna go do the box while my teammates go ahead and either do one really fast heal up um, or are working on the last gen and just kind of clear that this chain hunt that is charging right now is probably the most crucial at the moment because this is going to be what would basically keep them off the gens and allow you to snowball for the rest of the game. If I'm in this situation, um, I might even just, it, it just depends, but I might even just down this guy and leave him and just be like, okay, um, I'm going to try to figure out where the box is based on uh, where people were about 40 seconds prior. What, what was I doing 40 seconds prior? Um, and I know, again, this like th this is why a lot of people also don't play Pinhead is because this kind of like strategy that I'm talking about is a lot of brain power. And a lot of people don't want to use their brain when they're playing killer like this. Yeah. Um, but it's um, something that's really important, like getting getting that down, like seven seconds earlier like i was saying like where you down him in that room you know then you hook him and now let's say you get that barbecue information let's say you might catch someone who's running over to the box and you're like oh yeah they're running into a corner without a gen yeah that's a dead giveaway they're going for the box and then you go for them and then let's say you get one or two good place chains on them you down them and then you use all of the slowdowns you have to keep that last gen they're working on from popping and then from there, you just you just jump from box to box, and then and you win the game. You just win the game right here. So, but again, we'll see how fast they get this last gen done. We'll see. You should be getting this guy down. You do get that. You do have some nice stacks. You got it looks like on they were which is good. Mm hmm. Yep. And this is should be a pain res if I remember correctly. So yeah, yeah that's a pain res. That's really good. So right here. Um, I would have actually, oh, I see there's a player here. Um, so Nia just picked up the box, so, um, hmm, you know, what I would have done is the second that I saw that there was blood, I would have recognized that there, 
wasn't uh, that wasn't going to be someone going for the box because mm -hmm. like why would they they were probably lurking to try to see if they could get the unhook if you continued over to where the gens are. Um, yeah, there are there any gens over here? I don't think there are any gens over here. No, it's the one that that there was one that got up to like fifty percent over by the two story. That it's just like been that way the entire game. Like they've yeah, not finished. Yeah, so there's it. the two story. There's the one in the school. Um, okay, another really good chain. I would have done the same thing right there. Hey, fish. Good to see you, friend. Welcome. Back. Okay, right here. Looks like oh, she just well, vaults it. So. Gone, so. All right, so you do get that down. That's good. Um, I really wonder where that last. Okay, yeah. So there's one by uh, two story, one by the school, and uh, I don't know where that last one is though. Oh, it's outside of the school. Okay, yeah. so you. So this right? is your. Th this yeah, is okay, sort so of a three gen, but this not really. This is a sort of. Yeah, this is like a soft three gen. So what I would have done also. Oh shit! They got yes. that. Okay. Like I said, that yeah. has been 50 for a long time, and they kept ignoring it. And, and like, this is what I was talking about earlier in the middle of the match. It's like, they kept, like, you know, for box reasons or not, um, you know, you kept going. You knew that, like, there was a lot of pressure on this right side of the map that the survivors were applying, and you kept leaving this. So, yeah, see, see, I don't, I don't have sound on the Discord for some reason, but, you know, uh, I'm just kind of going off what you're saying. But if with that information, if I knew they were working on that gen, I kind of would have checked this one first. You knew they weren't doing anything by school because you got the down on the Leon and you could have very easily checked to see that gen in the street wasn't being worked on when you hooked him because it was right there. Also, um, I would have immediately honestly booked it over to this gen uh, just to make sure that it wasn't being worked on or maybe if it had any progress on it, even just to see if it had like how much it had um not go in the opposite corner where that injured person was uh was running where she ran you uh from house of pain over to shack like that wasted like what 20 30 seconds before you got that down yep and this so shit has I been half for like most of the game so it's honestly yeah, I, I wonder it didn't go earlier yeah i would have i would have just ignored her and i would have just checked that gen first and then if it wasn't ready to pop yet it didn't have like let's say it was still at like 50 i would have quickly came back to the school popped open the uh the door that leads downstairs and then i would have kind of started playing off that a little bit so uh you c i would have just followed her i wouldn't have gone to the door no here. yeah i i would have i would have played around the hook because they're, they're obviously going to want to try to save too there's no way they yeah. just leave this guy right once again okay, so you right... could have gated there yeah okay so one thing also i'm seeing that i haven't seen you do yet with pinhead is because like you've had some good chains but you are trying to you're trying to just back rev the chain you're not trying to what i like to call trick chain where in this situation in that situation with that nia i would have placed the gateway on the other side of the loop and then you meet her with the with the chain because then from there she she's kind of just stuck like at the pallet and then you can kind of try to mind game it a little bit get her to drop maybe she drops it in a panic so but yeah, you, you just get keep all of these wing at the survivor instead of putting your chains down <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you should have done that way earlier. Um. Yeah, it looks like she's still gonna be able to get this. What I would do is honestly, <laughs> no, I would, I would not have gone that way. That wasn't. Yeah, I would have learned to I get back stayed. anyway. Yeah, what I would have done was I would have held her on that side and then hit her friend, and then they're out of luck. Yeah, so. Especially with save. You might, to, you might be able to get a play here though. Oh, I would have waited. Yeah. I would have wait, used your chain way too early. Yeah, even impaling wires isn't going to be able to help there. Oh. Yeah, so like if you're in a situation where you're approaching the exit gate like that and you want to try to kill someone who's injured, you want to just keep following them. And as they get, uh, I'd say, like just crossing the front line um, to the middle area, that section of like the exit area, like the, that platform in the exit area, that's when you want to chain them, especially if you have impaling wire, because then you can uh, try to hit them. Or if their teammates like break a bunch of the chains, then the AI chains will usually grab them right before they're able to run out. 
So using it that far ahead, that, that basically denied you any chance of being able to down them in the exit gate and then pick them up. So here, here's what I'll say uh, about this. Uh, their builds are very strong, but so is oh, yours. Yeah. So is yours. You're you're running like the best slowdown of the game, uh, like a really, really good slowdown, the best non-slowdown perk in the game, and then info perk. So like you can say like yeah they brought a lot of really good builds and really good items but you also did too so it theoretically should have been not too steep um i think in terms of your main takeaways my first takeaway for you and i'll set you up for a second one here reaper um the first takeaway from me is like i said in our last oh like the only match you, you submitted a while back i did tell you that you know you have a bad time you know tracking gens and remembering what part of the map you need that survivors have been to go back and pressure. Um, in the Oni match, if you recall, it was like you would make these blood pools everywhere and you'd forget to go back to them. You would have gens that you knew survivors were working on. You forget to go back to them to pop them. And you kind of have the same problem here. And it's kind of this is probably the main reason you lost. Is that you had the same situation again where like you had Shaq gen being worked on you had two story being worked on you walked right under it and didn't knock the person off and then you had the gen outside of two story which was 50 percent at the beginning of the match and you never went back to pressure it never went back to check it all right um, i also want sorry to like interrupt there but i actually also do want to show you an example uh based off actually a very similar chase on the same map um, that I feel like would be very beneficial to show. So based on that first chase at the car, and also just talking about, again, the tr what I like to call the trick chaining, where you actually use the chain on the opposite side of the loop. Um, so this person gets the, the, the pallet down here, and I am having to go around, and I, there's no way I'll make that normally. So I throw it on the actual opposite side of the loop, and then do a little mind game, and it, I just get the down because of it. So right there like because a lot of pinheads they're that pallet's gonna come down and they're just gonna go oh i'm gonna break this or i'm gonna walk around this and they don't do anything but like right here you throw you want to put the chain in a location where you can kind of meet the survivor and you're gonna get that down like you're gonna get that down so that's like a perfect example of what like you should do in a loop like this okay right. so in terms of uh in terms of your first takeaway yeah i think this is like in terms of if we were looking at like a like a teaching thing like it's this is your homework this is the thing that this has shown up on more than one of your match reviews and it's still not improved if you hear a gen being worked on or are aware that a gen is being worked on you should go back and keep track of it especially if you have slowdown perks um you shouldn't be kind of just like realizing hey survivors i've been putting a lot of pressure on this side of the map and then just never going back over there you gotta you gotta go back there um and, and pressure that side just as much so otherwise yeah, you're just letting them get the gens done yeah don't be afraid to like be a little campy with the gens like you don't have to like hard camp them like sit next to them like but don't be afraid to be like okay you know i just got this down i'm walking all the way across the map to go check this gen like like, don't be afraid to go and check gens and like play gens. Like, there's nothing wrong with leaving someone alone. Like, you don't have to take every single chase you see. Like, if you think that a chase isn't going to be beneficial and it would be better to just see if someone's on a gen, sometimes that's just the better play. Because the thing is, if you're chasing someone around a gen that they're trying to get done, like, they're not gonna, most of the time, they're not gonna come in and try to get that gen done. And if they do, they're being cocky and you can punish them for that. So. Or bass wins a good time to commit to the box versus when's a good time to focus on gens. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they asked what when is a good oh, time. Oh, what is a good time? Well, so it it depends. Like, there's so many factors with something like that. With a question like that, um, if you it's it, I'd say the best time to focus the box is when it is the earliest part of the game um when you don't have when gens aren't a priority yet because like they're just getting on gens gens aren't getting done yet you have like a good 90 seconds or so before gens really start popping if you can really play the box off that time period first when gens aren't a super duper crucial moment especially if you're rocking something like pain res that will be able to snipe a random gen 
you know, or oh, well, not random, but you know what I mean, a gen across the map for a high amount and you get the box, like you, you should really be focusing the box at that point. And then if you um, are at a point where you're like uh, the video we just watched right now, where you're getting to the end of the game, um, the first thing you're going to want to do, though, is you're, you're going to want to make sure they're not just getting the gens done because the, the chain hunt kind of becomes kind of pointless after the last gen gets completed because it doesn't stop people from getting on the exit gates. Like it can become like a nuisance, but it once the gens are done, the chain hunt is kind of just like a secondary thought. Like they can leave it up and it's not a huge deal. So I think the thing that like, like especially in this situation, what we were harping on you for mid game um is you let two gens go and then you had another gen that you knew was at least 50 percent on that same side and then you went to the opposite side of the map so you had essentially lost half the game up until that point and then decided to go on a side quest <laughs> mm -hmm. when, when you you needed to be defending gens more then because you had if you guys remember watching the two-thirds video the mat matches of dead by day are split into essentially three sex sections which is the early mid game and end game um so that, that early game, you lost. You took the L. So from five to three and a half gens, you did not apply enough pressure. Um, so you need to secure the last two. Um, you need to play harder and sweatier in the last two sections of the game if you want to win. But you decided in the mid game to go on a side quest to find the box. Um, when you needed, when you had already lost out on so much gen pressure up until that point. Um, so I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, it's difficult because and it, it's one of those things that if you were, you know, a pinhead main, it'd be different, right? Because there's plenty of decisions I make as Xenomorph that, like, I can know I can afford to mess up, right? That's why you see me walking around in most of my games and not using the tunnels, like, all the time. Because ideally, when you're playing sweaty and whenever I've I've played in casual scrims, but I've never brought them to a real tournament. Whenever I play in casual scrims, I'm actually in the tunnels, like, like I'm barely on the map unless I'm chasing. Like, I'm in the tunnels constantly, right? Because in pub matches, I know I can afford to kind of just walk around and not always be like super crazy with my macro map pressure, right? Um, but you didn't, you don't have that decision making yet. If you ever, you know, decide to get more invested in Pinhead, be like, okay, this is a good time to let go pressure to go find the box. You don't have that ingrained in you yet. So you kind of just like made a shot in the dark and it was the wrong choice. Um, mm hmm. In terms of my the second takeaway, which you know you you will have way more to say about this than me, um, we already kind of touched on it with like the trick shots. Is like you kind of like just kind of like W'd at the survivors a lot, and you weren't really using your chains to circumvent chase unless it was a very very easy shot to hit, and that's kind of just leaving a lot of pressure on the table. Mm hmm. Like the. The, the thing is, that's that's something else that I actually, I think I briefly talk about in my guide that I'm working on, is you want to be going for a lot of hits. Like, you go to any one of my pinhead games, and I'm using my power, like, 30, 40 times a game. Maybe more. I mean, it kind of just depends on how many times I'm hitting or missing people, if I'm, like, killing someone in just two hits. Or maybe they're taking a bit longer to down because they have a stronger tile, but... I'm using my you you will see me use unless it's a very like special circumstance where they, they kind of just put themselves in a weird spot and I can kind of just walk up to them and hit them like I am using my power multiple times every single chase every single chase I'm I'm using it to even if it's just to like slow someone down a little bit so that they can't just W key to the across the map and they're forced to have to play the closest tile. Like I'm using my power, like every single chase, every single chase. I'm I'm not just walking people down. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hitting them. Uh, even if I miss, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and hit them. So, yeah, I think that's the phrasing that I saw a lot was you were just walking people down. When the whole point of that that half of the character's kid is to, you know, slow them down and then hit them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the third and final thing, this is relatively minor. Um. DJ Death, the TTV, was Death Hook at like four gens. And you never like came back to them or found them. Like you, you need somebody in Dead by Daylight, typically dead by two gens. And if that's not the case, you gotta go you gotta go find whoever's closest to Death Hook and get them out of the game. Um yeah. she was Death Hook fairly early on in the game, and she's the one that brought the offering. Um 
and you never went back to her until you were trying to scramble to kill her after all the gens were finished. Whereas if you had killed her like two gens, it would be a three v one and yep. it would way easier. And, to and just and and here's another piece of advice. I know like obviously like it kind of sucks to say this because like this is also something like for example with Billy, I hate doing it because where they say you kind of just have to lose until you start winning, but you. I I wasn't always a good pinhead. Like uh, there was there was plenty of time where I was just really really bad. But it's just you gotta keep just keep practicing. When it, it, even if you're going for shots that just seem outright ridiculous or they might not do very much for you, the better you get just trying to hit someone with a chain and feel confident. Like oh I'm gonna go ahead and do this chain in like exactly one and a half seconds because you know that they're doing something that I think would actually pay off. Like you're gonna start hitting chains and you're gonna get more comfortable with it. And then the more you do it, you're gonna get into a situation where in future games, you're gonna know what works and what doesn't work in certain loops. And then you're gonna be able to just recreate those and do those every single time you get into a loop like that. Um, and don't be afraid to like experiment. Like if, you, if you're chasing someone like a, I don't know, let's say like a long wall jungle gem, try things try to hit them from weird angles try to see if you can hit them through the wall when they're not looking at when they can't see you like go for shit like that like it because if you, when those pay off you not only are you going to just be doing better with the killer you're going to be enjoying the killer more like mm -hmm. you're going to enjoy playing them because you're gonna what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a moment where you're chasing someone on a long wall jungle gym they run through the pallet and then they run on the uh they don't go to the window but they decide to play the pallet and you're gonna put your gateway through the wall in front of them as they round the corner and you're gonna hit them and you're gonna down them and it's gonna feel great and you want and and that's the shit like why you want to go for shit yeah, like yeah, that because it also is just fun good to see you, like it's just fun it, it is effective but it is fun so all right so i think those would be like your main three that i would focus on improving at is there anything else that you saw that you stuck out that was like that's that's big enough that i would make it its own point what do you think we covered uh, it? i think we pretty much covered it which was um, Ten don't whole be afraid months. to let's go to thank you so much Teddy, though. Hit somebody I through that. a wall so like sweet. use your thank power you. through walls the like there's a funny situation you can hit people through walls I'm trying to make that worthwhile for um, thank you try to go for those slightly more like less comfortable shots because uh, it, it, even if it doesn't feel like it's an easy shot, like if you can try something, it's better than nothing. As I like to say, something's better than nothing. And mm -hmm. it's always a learning experience, uh, hit or miss. Um, and then the third one was kind of just, I think it, it was for you, it was like the gens, right? Was it was in that well, your third the point? Was the, the first one was, you know, macro sense of defending the gens. Second was, you mm -hmm. know, the pinhead stuff with the trick shots and dubbing people down. And third was uh, there was somebody death hook really early on in the game that they never revisited. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, that was I would focus on those. I think the reason you lost this match was the first point, which is the macro sense, which is something that's been a repeat issue for you. So that is priority number one. But uh, yeah. you do say you're more interested in Pinhead. Um, I'm lucky enough to call this homie a real life friend. Like, I appreciate the hell out of them. So they will be here often. I don't know, maybe not, for, you know, at this precise time, but you know we are around we will help you get there so no definitely like it, it's just you just got to keep practicing like it, it there, there's going to be a moment where you start to feel more comfortable going for different uh things with pinhead and just understanding but like it, it, he is a hard killer he is a really hard killer like it, don't 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 let this like be like disheartening or anything pinhead is hard especially on controller like i'll say that like but the thing is i know you i know good pinhead players on controller so i know it's 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 possible like um it might take a little bit of extra work but you can definitely get to a point where you're very good with pinhead on controller so um it's just practice it's literally just practice so like you just keep trying and trying um and eventually you, you will you will feel better and and these kinds of teams like this group like they're like i said last night i had a team just like this bringing really strong perks they burnt uh bad ham um i 4k'd them so um i 4k'd them and uh, they were doing the same kind of garbage where they brought bad ham they were kind of playing really really cheesy and i was just like okay i'll just match that energy too and i i'll just play well and yeah I, so i 4k'd them so thank you so much for your help i appreciate it yeah of course glad uh could give some insight you streaming later tonight 
Uh, it depends. We'll see. I'm gonna eat, and I kind of want to see if Bronx is feeling better. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I'll 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 just sit, leave it at a, as a maybe. Okay. Well, I've shouted you out uh, on that is Field Agent Reaper. That is one of the best pinhead mains in the community. Um, and obviously once this hits the YouTube, I'll put their YouTube in that as well. Um, thank you so much for the help, friend. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Uh, but I will let you go. All right. Sounds good. Bye. All right. So. Hopefully that was enough. Hopefully that was helpful. You got a little bit of a, you got uh, essentially pinhead <laughs> Reaper is to pinhead what I am to Xenomorph. So you got probably from the best, the best advice you could possibly get for this character. So it was very, very cool. And I hope it helps.